I am coming from uh, a, a literary background and also a queer theory background. I myself identify as queer, and I came into these debates as a queer theorist. I made a confession before several hundred thousand people in France, which got me into a lot of trouble, believe it or not. The confession was, I said, my favorite philosopher is Michel Foucault. Why is Foucault dismissed in the debates on the family? Foucault is crucial in analyzing popular media in order to trace how we arrived at our current understandings of the family. In his landmark text, The Archaeology of Knowledge, Michel Foucault argued against history, per se, preferring that scholars engage in excavation of fragments as opposed to construction of complete, comprehensive narratives. While the 1950s films suppressed many realities, they showed sensitivity to the feelings of loss, grief, and melancholy that came about when the basic triangle of mother, father, and child was broken. Annie Get Your Gun was not only about a female sharpshooter, it was also about an older sister who had to juggle caring for her orphaned siblings and her own pursuit of a husband. Showboat could very well have been about a gay man who left his wife Magnolia to sow his wild oats and then realized he had to return to his wife in order to love his daughter fully. Calamity Jane, despite its heteronormativity, did present a, a, an example of a man accepting his future wife as transgendered, and their marriage to each other without surgical reassignment would have guaranteed their ability to conceive children and raise them together. The new wave of utopian visions of the alternative family makes it so that children aren't even allowed to feel longing or mourning for the fact that a mother or father was taken from them, largely due to the decisions of the adults who are raising them. And so let's take a look now at the new genre in the 2010s, what seems to dominate the news, um, which is the genre of the same-sex parenting te testimonial. And I, you know, I wanna start out by saying that the number one way that kids lose access to their mother and father is when heterosexuals divorce, all right? So this is not a gay issue. I believe that if you're going to you know, tangle with people who are pushing motherless or fatherless families under the same-sex parenting rubric, you've got to have a plan on divorce. You've got to look at reform of the foster care and adoption system. It has to be comprehensive, all right? So, so you know, it, it can't just, you can't just get outraged when gay people are doing this stuff. But, and this is a big but, okay? While heterosexual misdeeds create the de facto conditions for children to lose their mother and father, the gay lobby, which is not the same thing as gay people, I wanna make that clear, the gay lobby has sought to make changes in the laws to enshrine as a judicial principle that children do not have a right to their mother and father. And that's why we find ourselves constantly in this death match with the gay lobby. It's not because gay people are particularly bad about these things, but because the gay lobby wants to enshrine this in law. And that's something that we didn't see before. And the juridical discourse of the law, if we, if we keep things within Foucault's framework, it grew out of the cultural discourse. It grew out of all of these texts that kept on deconstructing um, the, the 1950s marriage ideal and the 1950s model of a family where those relationships mattered between a man and a woman and the children that they conceive. In 2013, Philomena and Delivery Man came out and they brought a lot of attention to the human toll of anonymous sperm banking as well as um, adoption procedures and, and it really points to the loss, the sense of grief between the, adoptive, uh, the adopted child and the birth mother. Um, and it's interesting that there was a great deal of attention in the Huffington Post and Salon to those two films but they didn't ever want to criticize sperm banking or adoption practices when it dealt with gay couples. It was almost as though the gay community had carved out a special judgment-free zone on practices that warranted a great deal of criticism when heterosexuals did it. I absolutely do, and I have always supported, and this is gonna alienate a lot of the conservatives in the room, and I'm really sorry, but I've always supported civil unions, and part of that because became, I was raised by two lesbians, and when my mother died, there was no legal protection for her partner, and I saw her get evicted from the house that we had all been living in, and, um, and I got evicted right along with it. So I, I have always believed there has to be some kind of legal protection for it. I supported marriage for a long time, but the problem is that the, the, the people who have proposed gay marriage have chosen to yoke gay parenting and gay marriage together. After the 2003 decision in Massachusetts, unfortunately, the American Civil Liberties Union came out with a statement saying, from here on in, when we fight for gay marriage, 
we're fighting for gay parenting. And so that put me in the horrible situation where I have to be against gay marriage because it ultimately means that in order to protect the, relation, the sexual relationship between two adults, you have to shatter the relationship between a child and either his father or his mother. And I think a lot of the people who I might have disagreed with 10 years ago who kept on warning that gay marriage was the portal to new things, unfortunately those people have proved right. That you, gay marriage became this tidal wave that then swept up children. And so that I always see through the children's perspective. Does that answer your question?